we're going to be talking about mixed numbers and improper fractions, a review from our lesson today. So I'm just going to go over with you the trick I taught you to do the calculations to turn a mixed number, like this one, 2 and 1 fourth, into an improper fraction. And then I want to remind you of the trick to turn an improper fraction back into a mixed number. Not only that, I want to review again, we used fraction pieces in class today, I want to review how those pieces equate to these numbers. I know it was kind of um, confusing for some at first when you first used the pieces, but let's go over these numbers all together. Remember, stop, rewind the video, check it out again to make sure you get this down, because it's very simple once you get it. So this is a mixed number, meaning it's a whole number, which is the 2, and it's a fraction, which is the fourth. So all together, it's 2 and 1 fourth. And we want to change this number. Remember I told you that there's many steps to adding and subtracting um, fractions. And sometimes we have to change how we arrange these numbers. So that's basically all we're doing, changing mixed numbers into improper improper fractions. We're just rearranging the way we organize these numbers, and I'll show you that with a visual in a moment. But let me teach you the trick. First of all, you take the denominator, which is the bottom number. Remember the top number is the numerator, this is the denominator. And we multiply it by the whole number. So I start off with 4 times 2 is 8. And then all I do is add the numerator. Now remember we're going to go around this direction, and then we plop our answer right next to it here. So multiply first the denominator 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 would give me 9. And 9 will be my new uh, numerator. The last step is just bring over the original denominator. So our answer would be 9 fourths. Let's look at that mathematically. I have a box over here, and it's divided into four parts. This right here would be considered one-fourth. This is two-fourths, three-fourths, and four-fourths. So now that I've colored in all of them, four-fourths equals one whole box. So this is our one whole uh, marker that we like we used in class today with the pieces. These each are fourth pieces. And each one of them is a fourth. Now how many fourths are we talking about here? We're talking about nine. So if I were to quickly draw out nine of those fourth pieces, one, two, oops, not very good at this, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Because it said nine fourth pieces. That's what the problem was, that our answer we came up with. Well, how does that relate to improper or to mixed numbers? Well, let's see. How many of these would fill up one of these boxes? So if I put one in there, that would be one, two, three, four. Well, what do I have left? Oh, I still have more left. Could I fill another box? Yeah, I could do it again. I could fill a whole other box. Let's see. I'll draw the box here. And so I know it's not the right size, but you get the point. One, two, three, and four. Well, what's left over? There was one that doesn't fill an entire box. So I have two complete boxes here. Notice two whole boxes. And one is left over. That's where I get the one-fourth out of my fourth pieces. So nine-fourths is really the same as two and one-fourth. It's just a matter of rearranging these numbers. Let me give you one more problem. Let's go the other way around. Let's start with an improper fraction. Now an improper fraction, I like to call them top-heavy. Remember I told you they remind me of being a waitress because I used to have to carry these huge trays and everything was so heavy I thought I was going to drop everything. When you come to an answer in a, in a fraction problem, you cannot leave it looking like this. This is very improper. So you have to uh, change it around. And let's go over how to do that. All you do is take the bottom denominator and you divide it into the numerator. We've talked for a long time about how this line means division. So what I do is I would say 7 goes into 23. Well, 7 goes into 23 three whole times, because I'm thinking 3 times 7 is 21. 
So I would think that 7 goes into 23. That would be 3 times. That's 21. And to take away, that would be 2. Now mentally, I want you to start doing this in your head. So I want you to be thinking 7 goes into 23 three times, and I'm thinking, well, that's 21, 22, 23. Okay, so two left over. I put the remainder right here as the numerator, and all I do is bring over the original denominator. Now I have a mixed number, and this is the proper way to leave an answer in a fraction problem. Now you can see, you can go right back and switch it to an improper fraction very easily. All I have to do is multiply the denominator is 7 times 3 is 21 plus 2 gives me 23 and that would be right back to the same problem that would give me 23 over 7 so you can see how it goes back and forth same kind of problem hope that helped a little bit replay this and be sure to ask lots of questions in class if you still don't get it